Mark Rogers TV back with you running through all the bowl games and we stop on December 28th with a military bowl there in Annapolis, Maryland. Probably the only bowl game I would guess that's played on a home site with the uh, Navy still having to play its uh, annual uh, battle with Army hosting uh, the Pitt Panthers. We bring in uh, Jim Hammett from Cardiac Hill to help us size this one up, obviously from the Pitt perspective. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, Mark, how's it going? It's going pretty well. So unfortunately, we've got to kick this thing off with some really bad news uh, coming out last Friday. Uh, your star running back who was not able to play this season, James Conner, um, diagnosed with cancer. So just, just your thoughts and, and any details that you have at this point. Well, right now, obviously, it's been a tough year for James Conner, blowing out his knee uh, first game of the year, then being diagnosed with cancer at age 20. I mean, that's just a horrible thing you never want to hear. Um, every, you know, the support has been great. Every, the Internet's kind of blown up and really, really come together around James, and he's going to have a great support system going through this. Uh, at, at his uh, uh, initial press conference announcing his news, his doctor was there with him, and uh, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, UPMC, is a great – great center for cancer and they're very good doctors. So he, he has a great support system uh, medically. And uh, th they said his, you know, 85 to 95% chance of beating it. Um, he's going to go through chemo for six months. And I mean, his intention is that he's going to play next year for Pitt. So, I mean, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a good prognosis for him, good diagnosis. And, you know, he has something to look forward to. I mean, we all expected him to go to the NFL this is not how I wanted him to come back to Pitt, but it is what it is. And you just ho hope he's healthy first. And if he can play football, it'd be great too. Yeah. It's another reminder that uh, we talk about the games. We talk about the players as though they're robots at times that, uh, Hey, uh, who has the better team, the more talent, uh, let's get as much talent as possible and, and just focus on these guys as players. And they have personal issues, health issues, family issues, all just uh, the same as the rest of us. Uh, Pat Narduzzi, what a job he has done. Uh, I think uh, it's of note that uh, three of the four teams that Pitt lost to went 33-3. and three. You're talking about three of the best teams in the country in North Carolina, Iowa, and Notre Dame, and Miami no slouch either, finishing with eight wins. Narduzzi gets a two-year extension through 2021. Anything really to read into that or any benefits other than obviously locking up your coach possibly for another few years? Yeah, obviously uh... – you know, not even having a full season under his belt, a full recruiting cycle under his belt. It does seem a little premature that he's getting an extension in the first place, but he's done a good job, um, you know, eight and four, you know, breaking the cycle of four or five straight six and six seasons. So he's really brought the fan base together. Uh, we've talked before about how his energy on social media uh, recruiting, he just he just seems to have a, a passion for this. And he, he really brought the fan base together in a short amount of time. So he, he's a Youngstown, Ohio guy, so, you know, that's right down the road from Pittsburgh. So he, he he's kind of in his home base, so you, you kind of hope he's not going to go anywhere big. Uh, there was no real talks, even with all the coach, coaching jobs open this year, that he was going to go anywhere. So I think it's keep him around, let's give him money, and uh, let's see what he can do because the first year was very promising. Yeah, and if, of course, he's able to forge any kind of uh... – trench into Ohio and stay there in Pennsylvania. That's some of the best recruiting country, certainly um, in all of college football and especially in the Midwest and somewhat to the Northeast. All right. Nathan Peterman takes over the quarterback job early in the season, throws 19 touchdowns, five picks, 61%. So it appears just based on statistics alone that there was an upgrade in the pit passing attack because of that change. Yeah, Nate Peterman did a good job. Obviously, early in the season, there was some controversy uh, taking over for the incumbent starter, Chad Wojtek, but Peterman played well. Um, he, he's more of a game manager. I mean, he's not going to go out and throw 350 yards and five touchdowns a game, but he, he limited his mistakes, didn't throw a lot of interceptions, took care of the ball, and he, he, you know, he got the ball to Tyler Boyd in the tight ends, and you know, Pitt had a very good season, and there's a lot of promise with him heading into the bowl game and into next year. You mentioned uh, Tyler Boyd. We obviously had to talk about James Conner as well. Uh, two of the bigger stars in college football coming into 2015. And um, Conner's missed after the injury in game one against Youngstown State. Uh, it looked to be a running back by committee um, there for a couple weeks, even though I know Kadri Allison had the huge game in, in stepping in initially. Then it got spread out a little bit, and then he just kind of took the reins from there. 
Yeah, Ol- Olsen uh, had a very good season. He was actually named ACC Freshman of the Year, had a 1,000-yard season. Um, yeah, he was uh, kind of going into camp, not the guy. If Connor got hurt, I don't think he was the expected starter. So it was kind of a surprise for a lot of people following the team. But he really uh, – he- he's in the mold of James Connor, 6'2", 230, kind of a bigger back, and he did a very nice job this season. Yeah, you mentioned Boyd. Obviously, it all starts with him in the passing game, and he also gets a ton of yardage uh, on jet sweeps and the like with uh, like 250 yards. He caught 85 balls, six touchdowns. Uh, It seems to be a regular um, kind of talking point in the passing game when talking about Boyd and any support there. Uh, Not has Ford and J.P. Holtz had decent seasons, but obviously Boyd uh, gets targeted as much as anybody in college football. Yeah, Boyd actually was the only ACC player unanimous first team uh, selection. So, you know, that's even considering Deshaun Watson, the Heisman candidate. So Boyd was the only one. So he, he was definitely recognized by the coaches of the ACC. He, he, he had a great year. Um, you know, he even missed the first year and still put up eight or first game of the year and put up 85 catches. So he's just a very dynamic player. And right now the talk with him is, is he going to stay or is he going to go pro? And most people are thinking he's leaning towards the NFL. Yeah, Clemson, North Carolina, very stacked at wide receivers. Miami as well. Uh, that that speaks to Tyler Boyd as well. And then you throw that in regardless of position, and that uh, speaks volumes. Um, looking at uh, the place kicking, I had to notice this. Chris Blewitz missed uh, seven field goals, 15 of 22. If this is a close game, any any concerns there? Chris Blewett's been, you know, off and on this year. He's had some he, – he had the 55-yarder to beat Georgia Tech on the road, but then he'll miss, uh, you know, some easy ones at home. So it, it's kind of been up and down with him. But he has a strong leg. He, he is a pretty good kicker. He's talented. The thing with him is, uh, as most college kickers, it's kind of just a consistency factor. You know, when we talked in the preseason, it, it seems, if my, my memory serves me correctly, that uh, the linebacking core was rock solid and, and you, you had no concerns there. Certainly, uh, Michael Caprera and uh, Matt Galambos had uh, fine seasons. Galambos with 10 tackles for loss. But uh, these, these kids playing defensive back, and, and the game that I watched gun to gun was the North Carolina game, saw much of Notre Dame, some other games, Miami as well. Jordan Whitehead, freshman DB, has got 100 tackles. And Avante Maddox, also a young defensive back uh, sophomore, uh, playing really well with three interceptions. Uh, just your thoughts about uh, – who we can look for. There's obviously going to be a ton of people that see Pitt for the first time uh, in this bowl game. Just your thoughts about the defense and who we should look out for. Jordan Whitehead is a, is a tremendous talent. He was the, the top rated high school player coming out of the state of Pennsylvania last season. Uh, come to Pitt, started ever, since day one, uh, the ACC Rookie of the Year. Uh, he's just a tremendous player. Uh, he's one of those guys where you kind of see where Narduzzi's going to want to try to take the program, get big time defensive backs that can make plays. And Whitehead at safety has been outstanding this year. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch him against Navy because he, he had he had some pretty big tackles against Georgia Tech in that triple option. So you're going to see Jordan Whitehead. He's only 5'10", but he packs a lot of punch and he's, he's going to come up with some big hits. Okay, Jim, there it is, the triple option. Uh, Georgia Tech is the obvious comparison. Pitt probably has a bit of an advantage over most teams that have to face Navy out of conference and that they face uh, Georgia Tech there in the Coastal every year. Keenan Reynolds, what a career this kid has put together. Uh, The all-time touchdown record holder for rushing, 83 touchdowns, 29 passing. That's an all-time record at Navy, if you know anything about Navy. Uh, people out there that uh, they've never thrown the ball much. So 29 for a career is pretty stout. So it all comes down to running the football. This kid's got 19 rushing touchdowns just this year. Yeah, the Navy's going to be a, definitely a challenge. Uh, even in that Georgia Tech game, uh, the Yellow Jackets had their way with Pitt in the first half. Uh, Pitt definitely bit on the option a lot, and they weren't really covering the guy on the pitch. So they at least have some familiarity with it. And uh, I think a big thing with that was Pat Narduzzi himself that was the first time he coached against the triple option. I think he said in like 10 years. So it's going to be tough because Navy's good. Navy's better than Georgia tech this year. So it's definitely a cause for concern. Uh, They run it so well, they're playing at home and it's just, it's going to be a great challenge. But I I think if Pitt could win this game, it'd be, it would be a big statement heading into the off season with a nine and four record beating uh, Navy on their home field. Jim Hammett joins us from cardiac Hill covering Pitt football for SB nation. Um, 
You know, it seems as though it's the same with Navy and Georgia Tech. When they have better teams, they're still running the ball and doing it uh, 85% of the time, but they can at least burn you downfield, and they're somewhat efficient. So you, you go down through the years, and you will see Navy quarterbacks, no kidding, with 40% completion percentage. Keenan Reynolds, 55%, and when he hits it, he hits it big, big numbers. They got uh, this kid, Jameer Tillman, catching 22 passes for 21 per catch. So they they obviously will major on the run, but then they they hit you downfield for big chunks. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, it, it just presents a lot of challenges, like I mentioned with Jordan Whitehead. He's obviously going to have to come up and make some tackles. The linebackers are going to have to be on their games. And the big thing with Navy or any triple option team, it's containing – uh, the quarterback, the ends making play is kind of forcing him into decisions. Pitt has a pretty good defensive end. Juan Price had a big year, 11 sacks. So he he's going to be a guy that's important. He's going to have to blow up some plays in the backfield for Pitt to have, you know, a chance to slow them down. Navy's going to score their points, but Pitt has to limit it, obviously. And so Navy uh, comes in, uh, and if you look at their defensive stat sheet, uh, nobody really jumps out. Uh, guys are making plays all over the field, so it's not one or two guys on that defense. Will Anthony at defensive end, 10 and a half tackles for loss, six and a half sacks. Micah Thomas at linebacker leads the team with 64 tackles. So Navy, again, what differentiates a six or seven win Navy team versus a team that's going to win 10 games is not rushing the football because they always do that and do it very well. It's that they're playing some pretty good defense against a pretty tough schedule. That American Athletic Conference, uh, a lot of programs that you're pretty familiar with, uh, a much better conference uh, than it's been in a number of years. So Navy's been tested this year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you know, at, at one given time, I think there was four ranked teams out of the American. So it, it was it was definitely a dogfight in that league this year. And obviously Navy played Notre Dame this year. They gave the Irish a game. They probably gave Notre Dame a better game than Pitt did. So Navy is definitely equipped to hang with anyone in the country this year. It's it's one of it's a very special Navy team, and they were only maybe a game away from you know, potentially getting in that New Year's Six, one of the one of the big bowl games. Yeah, so it's kind of an odd thing, but uh, Navy was still a, a game to play in its most important game for traditionalists. Certainly, they will have the eyes of the nation. If you want to watch any college football this Saturday, it's going to be Army against Navy, and that's just a special thing unto itself. Uh, Jim Hammett joining us from Cardiac Hill to help us break down Pitt and Navy in the Military Bowl. Jim, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mark.